Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this game from Division P of TSEC 18. The game we're looking at today is Stoflace v Rochada. And it's a really nice game in the Bishop b5 Sicilian. Stoflace is white uh, and plays uh, the line with knight e4 and then has a novelty 10 a4. And this is a bit like uh, one of the moves that Alpha Zero played before um, against Bishop b5 Sicilian, which we analysed when we were looking at the Carlson Caruana match in 2018. Um, so this game shows lots of the themes actually that neural nets play, uh, in particular a nice slow steady positional build up of an attack on the king and then the attack is very fierce when it comes. We also see Stoface using both of its rook's pawns to kind of make black's pieces more passive. Let's have a look at the game. Indeed, let's go for it. So I'm just going to take it back to the uh, starting position. This was the uh, the position from the TSEC book. Um, so let's have a look at it. So the um, <coughs> the move order was uh, quite bizarre, but it does lead to a bishop b5 uh, Sicilian. So these moves were given by the TSEC book. I've never seen this way of getting uh, a bishop b5 Sicilian again, with uh, starting with knight f3 and knight c3. Um, g6, e5, knight g4 takes takes h3 knight h6 d3 and bishop g7 and we're at the uh, the last position of the t-sec book um this position is quite a, an interesting one a pretty complicated strategical one um blacks wasted quite a bit of time with the king's knight you know knight f6 g4 h6 uh, but in doing so blacks um tempted forward the white e pawn so the white pawn e pawn has moved from um, from e4 to e5 and what this means is that the, the dark squares, uh, the central dark squares around this pawn, uh, d5 and f5 in particular, have been freed for black's pieces. So that gives black um, a, a number of uh, possibilities for activation. So uh, bishop e6 to d5, for example, and knight f5. And from f5, the knight can come into d4. Um, what has white gained? Well, white, uh, black's uh, queenside pawn structure has been... Um, has been uh, uh, damaged the um, um, and white has gained you know quite a bit of space really as well so it's a uh, yeah very, very interesting position um, now in this position the most common idea for white has been to play g4 and uh, I saw this move actually in a game uh, between uh, Michael Adams and Nick Pert at uh, British Championship um, how is black normally reacting black's normally trying to play a move like um, castles queen e2 and then normally something like f5 and after g5 knight f7 bishop f4 queen a5 yeah we reach a really interesting position um black's pieces the well certainly the bishop on g7 is really uh completely blocked behind the pawn on e5 so that one's very passive um white's also got ideas of playing h4 to h5 um on the other side, black's got um, b5 to b4 as a disrupting maneuver. And also, you know, ideas like um, bishop b6 to d5 or knight d8 to e6, attacking that bishop on f4, and then maybe on to d4. Um, yeah, always would feel slightly worried with black in this sort of position. I mean, h4 to h5 does, does feel quite worrying when it arrives. But, um, um, well, the engine seem to feel that it's um, um, sort of balanced. So, yeah, I mean, uh, and um, black's results have not been too bad from, uh, from this position either. So that would be the, uh, the normal way of playing for, uh, for white, certainly the normal human way of playing. Um, Stoflace played uh, this move knight e4. Um, so that's attacking the pawn on c5, but it's 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 kind of not immediate because if you did play knight take c5, uh, black would have queen a5 check. Exactly, exactly. Um, in actual fact, Rothschilder uh, played a move that it would probably have to play eventually anyway. Um, it played b6 to defend the pawn. Um, and now... Uh, okay. here's, the, here's the novelty. Uh, so Stoface 
plays a4 in this position. That's right. It's um, uh, now it's a, it's something that we saw many times uh, when we were looking at the, uh, as Natasha said, when we were looking at the Carlson Caruana match where Magnus kept on playing um, two knights e6 in the Sicilian and uh, Caruana kept on playing bishop b5 takes c6. And um, Alpha Zero was always suggesting a4. Um, and um, well, what's the idea of it? Well, we're going to see the, the full idea of it in all its glory, actually, in, um, in the game. Um, all of the uh, NNs and um, recommended that you know, the black should play a5 uh, in this position. And, um, and indeed, I mean, I think this is the, uh, the most sensible way of doing things. Um, it stops, well, essentially it stops White's plan and asks White to find a new one. Um, the only drawback to it is that, um, well, the queenside pawns are, are somewhat weakened. Um, for example, if a white knight comes to c4, then um, b6 will really be attacked, not defended anymore by a pawn on uh, by the a pawn on a7. Um, looking at what um, uh, uh, Stoflace and, and Leela were were, were uh, intending, um, a couple of interesting ideas. Um, so castles, knight f5, and then uh, this amazing move, c3, uh, to meet bishop a6 with rook e1. Uh, quite, a, quite, quite astonishing, actually. Uh, to be honest, uh, it's uh, um, I, you know I was staring at it and thinking, well, why on earth can't we take the d3 pawn? But um, queen d3, queen b3 is um, somewhat awkward. Uh, the pawn on b6 is attacked, and White's going to be very quick, bringing his bishop out and his rook into play. So actually, gets quite dangerous for uh, for Black. Again, exploiting the weakness of the pawn on b6 that you've uh, tempted out with um, with a4. Um, bishop d3 would uh, be met by knight d6 check. And um, this is another very interesting thing. Um, if knight takes d6, just queen d3 back, um, knight f5. And I was looking at this and thinking, you know, isn't white just a pawn down? But um, again, the engines are thinking that this is very, very pleasant for white. g5, knight h6, the knight's offside, the bishop's trapped behind the pawn on e5. And then you play knight d2. Again, aiming for this pawn on b6. Um, and again, it's, um, it's a rather, yeah, rather difficult position for, uh, for black. And because what white is eventually going to do is go knight c4, bishop e3, and then maybe even break with b4 and manufacture an a pawn in that way. Um, very, very interesting play, you know, and uh, not, not caring at all about material, actually, just, you know, purely playing for the, uh, for the structure and the passive black pieces. So um, I think the, the main line was, uh, was castles here. And then um, I quite like this one. Uh, it was d4 takes g4, knight h6, knight d4, c5 and knight b5. This was the main uh, leader line when it was uh, watching the game. And again, you know, um, it's not um, a huge, huge advantage for white. But again, you've managed to make use of this move a4 to a5 to get a great uh, outpost on b5 for your knight. Um, so really, black, black can can swap queens and take on e5. Uh, I'm afraid not because there's a there's a knight on h6. Not, not. And h6 is on. There's a little yes. problem there. That's right. The knight on h6 always. So um, yeah, yeah knight. Black is really tied up. Black is really. Can't move anyway, but it's kind of. That's right. That knight is uh, that. that knight is is really tied up. So, um, well, Rochada played uh, played knight f5 simply. And uh, uh, Stoflace played um, uh, a5. And um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, well, you've, you've moved your knight in, but you've still got to find a way to, to deal with this threat. I mean, a takes b6 is a big threat, of course. a takes b6 would allow rook takes a8. So um, black's got to do something. I mean, if you go rook b8, which um, is a common idea, it's been played against me, actually, uh, um, in, a, in, a similar, in a similar position then um, you, you can, when you take off, you'll gain the A file. And um, the rook's also a little bit uncomfortable on, 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 um, on B8 because bishop F4 will threaten E6. So there's some, it's not completely comfortable for developing like that. Um, Rothschild played bishop A6, which is, um, uh, yeah, stops A, 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 stops, uh, A5, it stops A takes B6. You can just reply A takes B6. Might threaten C5 to C4. But that bishop might just end up, you know, completely out of the out of the game, really. And um, uh, and the other thing it does, it it allows this idea of e5 to e6, which which could be dangerous as well. 
So Stowe Place just played castles, castles, rook e1, um, defending the pawn on e5, sidestepping c4, you can now meet it with d4 simply, um, knight d4 from Rothschilder, and now Stowe Place really starts to play very nicely, you know, just uh, really f just um, seems to come up with a, a, a sort of a, like a grand strategy for, uh, for where all its pieces are going to go, and then just implements that just, um, you know, without any hesitation, it's... Uh, it's very impressive. So c4, this first move, which I really love, um, because after all... It reduces the scope of um, Black's bishop there along that diagonal. Exactly. The bishop on a6 is, uh, is now completely, uh, um, well, shut out of the game on that diagonal. Um, c5 to c4 is no longer going to happen. Um, you take control of the d5 square and um and also i like it because um you know black's whole idea has been well i'll force the e-pawn onto e5 and i'll get knight f5 into d4 and stoflace just says that's fine you have the square no worries no worries at all um and um um in actual fact yeah it's it's quite hard for um um for black now to to, to really work out how to do counterplay i mean if i was black i'd be looking to play something like f6 or f5 you know as quickly as possible just to try and um uh, and break the um the white grip um moves like knight f3 um are actually not that great if bishop e5 i go knight takes c5 and uh this is going to be very unpleasant for black um i mean actually the the dark squares are very weak now on the king and obviously the c5 pawn is um is doomed and the bishop on the light squared bishop is you know completely restricted by the uh, the white pawns um, you could play a move like uh, queen c7, for example, just uh, increasing the attack on, on e5. And then I think black and white can just play this move e6. And if f takes e6, queen g4. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the engines are very, very positive in this position. They're giving uh, it, you know, plus 1.5 or something. I'm not 100% sure that that's uh, correct. Um, maybe a little bit op optimistic. But it is a very a very difficult position for black. I mean, the the key thing about it is that black's got you know basically no pawn breaks, and white is so solid in the centre, white's going to be impossible to shake. Um, and there there are quite a few um, annoying little little problems. Well, there's first of all there's a threat on e6, and if just just imagine just ignoring the pawn on e6, you play a move like rook d8, then a takes b6 will force a horrific queen b6 just to defend the bishop on a6. So just a lot of um, of uncomfortable points there for uh, for black. Yeah, Rothschild kept on um, essentially tried to keep the position. It, it's its evaluation wasn't that bad at this point. It was something like uh, I think 0.43, so a slight advantage to white. Uh, but um, if you look at Stoflace's evaluation and also the the, the evaluation of uh, well, especially Stoflace actually was uh, much higher already at something like 1.2 and just rising continually. You know, it really felt that uh, that its position was just fantastic. So Rochander played h6, useful in general to keep pieces out of g5, but obviously not really contributing uh, necessarily to, um, uh, to a, a big plan. Rook a2, now. And when I saw this, I wasn't sure how or, or exactly what that rook was doing and how it was going to go into the game. It's, it's kind of removing itself from the long diagonal, uh, but also potential to double up either on the a-file or somewhere else along the, defend along the second rank or attack along the second rank yeah i mean it's um it's a it's a nice multi-purpose move um just uh um and just getting out of any tactical threats but it's got a, a much also a much deeper purpose um still played played knight e6 um fine um yeah b3 um, and now, uh, well, this is quite nice, of course. The, the rook's connected with the rest of the game now. So that rook could come around to e2, for example, or to d2 to defend d3. And uh, obviously b3 solidifies c4 as well. So if black ever plays b6 to b5, the pawn's already defended. King so h that bishop on a6 does really look quite out of the game and, and not too easy to really get back into the game yeah i think you know if i think if you play a move like bishop a6 um you have to follow up quickly with a c4 you've got to have a concrete idea behind it i think that's the point because as a general development square it's um it's not a great one you know and um uh you know really the bishop would be much more useful covering light squares on the king's side you know along the 
the C8 H3 diagonal. Um, so this is already, and uh, well, you see with a move like King H7, um, well, you know, there's not, it's not really clear what, um, what, uh, what black is aiming for. And uh, well, Stoflace uh, carries on as we would expect with the move H4. So uh, teeing up for, uh, for, for rooks, pawns, moving. exactly for the H5. It's funny because we um, uh, there's a, a previous game that we analysed of uh, of Stoflaces. Um, actually, it hasn't got so many views um, compared to the to the other games, but it's uh, an absolutely wonderful game against uh, Ethereal um, in the French defence, where it moves both of its rooks pawns uh, up as well. So it's um, uh, it really does seem to do this. Um, here it's just. Yeah. So is doing very well so far in the division. It's, uh, it's right at the top of the table. Yeah, leading, and, uh, leading, uh, leading, a, po leading a point clear at the moment. Yeah, but um, it doesn't seem to have, been, it doesn't seem to be vastly different from Stoflace that was in the same tournament last year. No, that's right. Apparently it's the same version. It's the, uh, the A14 version, so the same version as last time. Um, yeah, intriguing as to, to why, um, why it did pretty well last time but um um but you know didn't didn't challenge uh, Leela and um uh, and uh, stockfish at the top and it might be you know it, it's some of it might just be openings you know that um uh, there's some openings uh, that it, that it's getting at the moment are just um you know are just uh, um uh, suit it suit it simply and uh, um i mean it's playing very very impressively it's looking really really good so um so h4 um yeah Rothschild played king h8 which was its planned move after h4 um but it's a little bit uh, a little bit difficult to think what, what exactly that's that's all about um in any case Stoflace played um an, another excellent move that just shows this you know this this long term planning again uh, knight h2 um that move is possible now because actually king h8 undefended the pawn on h6 so Bishop e5 could be met, well, either by knight g4 or by just bishop h6. And then you've got this move h5 to follow up and the, and the whole, you know, the whole uh, black king side is very, very weak. So knight h2, um, Rothschild played bishop b7, which, um, yeah, it's not, again, not, not really going to do uh, anything amazingly um, uh, positive about that, about the position. And then um, white played f4. And this is getting very, very serious now for black because, um, well, now that you've defended the pawn on e5 with a, with another pawn, um, essentially your knight on h2 and your rook on e1 are free. So they can do all sorts of things. And, uh, well, those all sorts of things are going to be something to do with attacking on the king side. Um, so white's really starting to tee up here. Again, I mean, with black, even if it's bad, I would play a move like f5 or f6, you know, anything to... Uh, to uh, to try and break open the um, uh, the king side. Well, f6 might allow queen. Interesting to see what Leela or Stoflitz would play as black here, because the neural nets do tend to like doing these um, challenging in the centre, so that f6 type of move. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't uh, I haven't actually checked this specific position, but um, um, I think in any case, it's a very difficult one to defend. I think Stoflitz was already on on plus four by now, so um, it was it was it was really. Uh, it was really, it was really very confident. Uh, so Rothschild gave a check, um, which again, the purpose of which is not very clear because uh, that just develops uh, the, the white bishop and e3 is a pretty good square. Um, and now this great move, a6, um, very typical uh, NN thing. And again, reminds us of an alpha zero game um, against Stockfish, a Queen's Indian uh, that we looked at. Um, a Queen's Indian with a, um, one of the most beautiful mating variations I've ever seen, actually, uh, in uh, in a game. Um, yeah, when we did our our um, some of our Alpha Zero Roadshow talks, we got people to try and find the checkmate, and we did have a few. We had a few people that did manage to spot it. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of them, Spanish Grandmaster. Yes, that's right, uh, Miguel Yescas. He, he was very quick on spotting it. That was very impressive. Um, but, um, but anyway, that's, uh, if you want to see that, take a, take a look at that video. It's, um, I'll, uh, um, it's, I'll, I'll put the, uh, the video in the comments as well. So you can find it. It's uh, a really fantastic game. But again, the, the start of that whole, uh, um, of that whole attack was playing an A pawn up to A6. 
Um, and then just just giving it away. I mean, simply it's you're going to lose that pawn. That's that's nothing wrong with that. The, the idea is that whilst black is um, black has to to, to 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 take that pawn, Spencer moves taking it. Otherwise, his pieces will be completely blocked. And whilst black is doing that, white develops an attack on the king side. And the alpha zero one uh, was uh, um, was actually uh, I, I guess even even deeper because uh, it needed a, a few pawn sacrifices in order to get things going. Uh, what all that uh, Stoflace is doing here is teeing up in a in a very a very very direct manner. So played h5, knight c7, and then g4. Knight takes a6, a pawn up, and then the the move basically that essentially makes sense of all the moves that Stoflace has been playing. You know, advance of the a pawn uh, originally to a4, freeing a2 for the rook. Rook a2, c4, b3, and now f4 and g4 after knight h2, and now rook g2. And, uh, this rook is fearsome here. Indeed. And I, you simply look at the white pieces and how concentrated they are on the king side. And then you look at black, and uh, it's hard to imagine that black's had the same number of moves as white, basically. You know, it's um, really, you know, really very, very uh, uh, huge difference there in, uh, in, 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 in you know, strategical understanding. And um, knight b4 was played, attacking uh, d3. Knight f2, simply covering it. Um, and here Rothschild's evaluation really, really dipped. So it really understood here that it was um, it was in huge trouble. But uh, but obviously, you know, again, it's that uh, that thing just a little too late, simply because uh, um, well, the attack is already there. Um, so Rothschild played a5, or oh, king g8 rather. And now um, a very nice move, knight f3. Um, activating the last passive piece. It's what uh, Jonathan Rowson always said, the Scottish Grandmaster. You've got to talk to your pieces and ask them which one aren't joining in the fun. And, uh, well, the knight on h2 wasn't doing a great deal now. So this knight is coming round to h4 to attack the pawn on g6. a5 was played by, by Rothschild. Um, it's, um, in actual fact, you know, on the previous move, black could have tried um, this move rook d8 attacking the pawn on d3. Um, but, um, I mean, there's plenty of ideas, but for example, e6 would be a very unpleasant move there. So if queen e6, we can play bishop takes c5, and um, um, and otherwise, why well, it's just taking on f7, taking on g6. Well, for example, uh, we'll play here. We'll, uh, oops, not that way. Actually, even that way is strong, I come to think of it. But I could take, take, and play f5 and then play g5 and just move in and uh, and the position is huge for uh, for white so um king g8 was played knight f3 a5 knight h4 um g takes h5 we'll take back on h5 and play f5 it's just massive so rothschild has started uh, giving stuff away here um to try and uh, uh stem the onslaught I mean, if you go rook d8 in this position, then g5 is a big, is a very big thing. Um, if knight d3, we've got g takes h6, and the queen's coming into h5. Very, very that difficult. Looks very pretty for white. Indeed, very, very nice. So um, we got onto desperation territory here. Rothschild played bishop takes c4, just giving up a piece to exchange off queens and uh, stem the attack. But of course, um, I mean, we look look at this position. It's uh, Absolutely massive for uh, for uh, for white. Um, e6, rook d2, knight c3, and um, uh, the game did not last long. We we'll just whiz through the moves there. Uh, there's really nothing that um, uh, that black can do. Knight takes knight f6 check. G5 and knight f3. The knight comes back into e5. I uh, hear black resigned. Knight e5 is coming in next, and then f7 and uh, and queening the pawn. So there we are. It's um, it wasn't a um, it wasn't a Titanic fight. It was you know a very one sided game. But I hope you enjoyed that because um, um, I like very much simply the um, sometimes it's very nice seeing these you know very clear strategical games where um, uh, one side you know obviously understands the position has better insight into a position and can just demonstrate a lot of uh, you know a typical way to uh, to approach the position. Always very instructive you know to have uh, these sort of model games. And this one was very nice. I thought, you know, the plan of A4, obviously, uh, kind of what you expect from an NN. Um, I thought this whole idea of playing C4 and then Rook A2, you know, and then um, uh, and then you transfer, you just clear the second rank, gradually move your pieces forward. And then um, um, before you know it, you've got a Rook over on the second rank. 
and of course this pawn sacrifice on uh, on a6 very reminiscent of uh, of uh, of a stunning alpha zero game and uh, and you know just as effective here and uh, and the final touch i think you know bringing the um, the last piece into action you know unhurriedly it's you know it's a very slow moving attack this one but it's absolutely impossible to stop and again we saw loads of those types of games in the uh, in the stockfish alpha zero games so hope you enjoyed that i mean do start watching the tcc if you uh, if you've missed it so far season 18 very exciting uh, Stoflace, a point clear um ali uh, stein updated version uh, looking strong actually uh, leela uh, last champion and uh, stockfish again updated um so will it be another leela stockfish super final this time or yeah. will Stoflace or ali stein for example managed to get into the final. Yeah, it's very close. I mean, um, um, I have to say so far, uh, you know, the top four engines have looked very, very impressive. Um, so um, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a close one. Very, very exciting. So um, so do follow that. And um, well, also watch our channel. We'll be uh, whenever an exciting game comes along, we'll be covering it as well. So thanks very much for watching. Thank you for watching.